We're facing the loss of some of these environments, some of the, we're facing the loss of lives, and now is the time to take action on climate change. Now is the time to take serious steps to phase out fossil fuels, but we're still facing massive hurdles on this. To talk more on this, I'd like to introduce you to Anne Dorr. Many of you know, will know Anne, she works tireless, tirelessly as an agricultural advocate, a well-known community voice against fracking in South Australia. She works closely with Lock the Gate and we're so lucky to have volunteers like Anne giving so much to the movement. With her is Peter Owen, director of the Wilderness Society South Australia, who has been instrumental in the protection of our environment. He has been named South Australian of the Year in the environment category and has won the Jill Hudson Award for Environmental Protection. Please welcome Anne and Peter. South Australia is the driest state in the driest inhabited continent in the world with only 4.6% high yielding agricultural land. This land is at risk. Most of our amazing state is covered by mining and petroleum exploration or production, directly contributing to climate change. I believe they cannot be trusted with our farmland. As a result of petroleum activities in South Australia, poisonous hydrocarbons have leached into the groundwater. There have been pipeline leaks through corrosion and cracks inappropriate disposal of wastewater, oil spills, uncontrolled and unintended gas releases, landowner complaints, road incidents, heritage disturbance, sump waste being pushed over a cultural exclusion zone, two explosions and one fatality. Fracking pollutes water. How much aquifer contamination or what magnitude earthquake because of drilling through faults will be the wake-up call. The government acknowledges drought conditions are likely to increase in frequency across many parts of South Australia as a consequence of climate change, particularly in agricultural areas. It is unacceptable that toxic wastewater 60% saltier seawater from gas exploration has been spread on southeast prime agricultural land. <laughs> Farmers and agricultural communities face uncertainty with water, our food bowl, export markets, tourism and loss of lifestyle as they now know it. The emotional toll and suicides occurring across Australia is unforgivable. Farming communities are the lifeblood for the city. Air Peninsula, York Peninsula, South East and other areas across the state are united in vehemently opposing destruction of their farmland. I ask you to stand with these communities. The government must be called to account and protect our precious farmland and environment before it is too late. Along with your help, the alliances in these areas and lock the gate, we will win this battle. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Um, I think Anne and I have got the gig of bringing it all back to ground level um, and reminding us that we've got a long way to go. Um, there's some positive things happening, yes that's true, but there's also some pretty terrible things happening in our part of the world that we need to make sure that we maintain the energy and the capacity to try and deal with. Now, since the 1992 Earth Summit in Rio, carbon dioxide emissions have increased by about 50% and are increasing at about 5% per year. Increases of this magnitude will push the planet way beyond 2 degrees by mid-century. Mid there, is, there is literally no chance of staying below that. 
Over 80% of the known fossil fuel reserves must stay in the ground. That is the issue. Now, credit, credit needs to be given to the South Australian Premier, Jay Wetherill, the South Australian Environment Minister, Ian Hunter, and Federal Opposition Environment Spokesman Mark Butler for their hard work regarding domestic policy settings. Australia's domestic emissions are about 1.5% of the global total. But when you add our huge fossil fuel exports to that, we are over 5%, which makes Australia one of the largest carbon dioxide emitters in the world, behind China, the US, Russia and India. Now this, this is the issue that we have to deal with. We need to stop bickering about domestic policy settings that should be a given and get serious on a just transition out of the existing fossil fuel industry and an immediate stop to the expansion of the fossil fuel industry, such as what we are currently seeing in the Great Australian Bight. Our government at a state and a Commonwealth level appear to be happy to have the Great Australian Bight an area that the oil industry are claiming to be one of the huge frontier fossil fuel basins left on the planet, opened up. Now that is massively at odds with the direction this planet needs to head, and I'd suggest absolute shame on the Wetherald and the Turnbull governments. In the last few months, the US President Obama has made some significant decisions to stop the expansion of the fossil fuel industry there. Shell have been pushing into the Arctic, and that has been described as the Northern Hemisphere's equivalent to BP and others pushing into the Great Australian Bight. Obama has put a stop to this. So we call on the Wetherill government and the Turnbull government to put a stop to the oil industry pushing into the Great Australian Bight. Because unless we can achieve some of these things, None of the paper that a lot of these other policy settings are written on is worth anything. Because this is what is driving climate change. The expansion of the fossil fuel industry and that is where we need action. The other issue that Obama has recently moved on is a massive pipeline through Central America. Or through, through North America, but through Central North America. And only in the last two weeks we've had our state government and our Commonwealth Government pushing for huge pipelines through Central Australia so we can open up much of that area to fracking. I mean, get serious. Obama has set a precedent. He's just kicked the oil industry out of the Arctic, recognising we cannot open up more frontier fossil fuel basins and recognising the, the importance of that area environmentally. He's just killed off a huge pipeline. Surely, if our state government and our Commonwealth Government here are heading over to Paris to talk about all the good things we're doing here, they would have to, at a minimum, follow the US precedent and say, we are not opening up massive frontier fossil fuel basins in our country. The Great Australian Bight needs to be protected. And we are not opening up Central Australia through huge pipelines. That area also needs to be protected and we cannot afford that carbon going into the sky. So I guess the key message here is we've got to get serious. All of these trivial policy commitments are not worth anything unless we see action on these big issues. It is critical that we justly transition out of the fossil fuel industry to clean energy and stop the senseless push to expand the polluting industry immediately. Given what we know about dangerous climate change, our government's expanding the fossil fuel industry into areas like the Great Australian Bight and Central Australia is an act of, it's an immoral act of vandalism upon the future. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Anne and Pete. Um, I think what's really incredible is that everyone is talking about these fossil fuel projects like we need fracking, we need to open up the Great Australian Bight, when the fact is we do not. We can power Australia by 100% renewable energy energy. We are one of the sunniest and windiest countries in the world and the fact that we are not doing so is ridiculous. So let's join together and let's be part of the movement for 100% renewable energy.